the invitation, uh, Said, and um, it is great uh, for all this initiative um, to take place and um, to try to do whatever possible for families and their children uh, with autism. So what, uh, what we will do today, the schedule is that I will go through a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation that I prepared for you today. Uh, there is a lot of text on, uh, on the slides. I will not present all of them. I will try to give uh, emphasis only on the most important ones. However, the presentation and uh, some videos that I will share with you now Everything will be sent to Said, so he will be able to translate, uh, to, uh, to open a discussion with you uh, via his uh, charity, his group. So in that way, let's say that it will stand as an introductory and to see whether there, there are any means or any ways of uh, uh, having a collaboration and trying to, to make things happen in Bangladesh. Now, I am sharing my screen. Uh, Christos, I'm sorry to yes. interrupt you. I mean, just uh, can I have like a few minutes, like two, three minutes? Yes. Because yes, you know, of course. Because after presentation, I want to say something about you. I mean, because uh, other, otherwise it, it would it, it would not be a justice because uh, you know uh, many people might not have an idea about you. So, but before you start, you know, let me start. You know, give a little, very, very short uh, introduction to uh, Dr. Christos Nikopoulos. Um, it is. I mean, he has got an impressive. Um, you know, track record of work and research and all of the things that we shared, you know, last night to our group. Um, and that's not actually enough though. But, you know, uh, Dr. Christos Nikopoulos is a clinician, is a university lecturer and educator and consultant, a researcher and author in uh, ASD, um, Autism Spectrum Disorder. And he's been working here for, I mean, more than 23 years. And uh, he's a board certified <coughs> Your analyst is a former member, board of directors of the BSCB. He's applied a sciences representative, the European Association of Behavior Analysis. So there are too many more to come, but I don't like to take more time. And, um, and another thing, um, I would like to uh, congratulate you, Dr. Christus, for receiving the Chartered Scientist Award from uh, Science uh, Council. And uh, it's really, I mean, you have done a great job and you have uh, worked as a pre keynote speaker at more than 80 uh, international conferences. So what I want to tell you from special child care, because I think this is my you know, responsibility before you start, that we are really, you know, happy to have you uh, today in this meeting. And this is, this is going to be really, I know, I we believe uh, effective for people. I mean, like us, I'm also a parent of, a, you know, autism child, so it will be helpful. We believe you will stay with us, right? And uh, I will request my um, uh, guests today to go through uh, your, uh, you know, your um, uh, profile that we have already shared in our uh, group. So uh, let's hear from you and we'll come back uh, to other discussion later and we'll go to our parents then, okay? Please. Right. Yes. Thank you. Very, thank you very much for this introduction, Said. I have included a few things okay. about <laughs> about myself in the presentation. But what I, yeah, because, because before sharing, what I would like to say is that um, for some reason I am not a parent of a child with autism, but uh, for some reason from a very 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 young age, for about 15, 16, I knew that that was my area. That was where the whether I was able to find myself and then I was tried. So yes, when I see also my profile, it looks very impressive even for me, but uh, uh, for me, it was the natural way of living. I, I don't feel that um, I have done anything uh, more or anything uh, uh, that uh, it was against myself. I don't know how to explain this, but uh, I don't have any personal reason. Uh, however, I feel very, very, very much the parents, the families, the children, and uh, in all over the world, I'm trying to, to help, to facilitate as much as possible. Now, hi, Babu, I know you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is the man behind this event today. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was a bit, like, a bit late. Sorry about that. <laughs> No, 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 that's, uh, that's fine. Uh, right, now let me share my screen uh, sure. with sound. So uh, I will close this because it takes. Uh, 
it looks fine. It's okay. Fantastic. So what I, what I, I, as I said, uh, I will do is that I will go quite quickly just to give you, let's say, a taste of what ABA is. Uh, and of course, any at any time, we can go deeper and deeper and we can explore this. So let me see things that uh, we haven't... Um, Yes, I was one of the uh, members, directors of the B, BACB board. I will explain to you what this is in a minute. And uh, also, I was, uh, until very, very recently, my circle finished, the Applied Science Representative of the European Association. Uh, now, the things that uh, you haven't heard, yes, you have said that. Uh, we have said this. I have published quite a lot, uh, written, so in a way I have shared most of my life in both academic and uh, clinical uh, way and uh, at the moment I train many uh, many professionals, I provide quite a lot of courses in, uh, in Europe and um, uh, in order to to create more professionals who can work for uh, families uh, with autism um, and of course this is my clinical uh, background about the assessment tools, the, the, the work that uh, I do directly with the children, the, the chartered uh, council, it was mentioned. Uh -huh. And I also, I am one of the uh, European Union expert evaluator, which is quite important because we try at least as much as possible uh, to secure some sort of uh, funding for initiatives in order to facilitate um, uh, children with autism. I know that uh, Bangladesh is not part of the EU. However, uh, if initiatives happen in some countries, then you know how this can be transferred into uh, other countries as well. So although I was about 11 years at the university, then uh, I, I had many, like like it happened today, I had many requests for, uh, from parents, uh, visits, um, uh, in order to, uh, to be able to implement uh, strategies and programs for their children. So I realized that uh, my, my goal of being 100% academic didn't facilitate the whole process of providing services to the, to the families who need uh, as much as possible. So from that perspective, I resigned and then I established the autism consultant services. And uh, now also that uh, you said you are in Saudi Arabia, it is about to open uh, um, because I do a lot of work in Saudi Arabia as well. So to open one, uh, to open um, uh, the company, a sister company in uh, Riyadh. But the uh, programs uh, and uh, I educate, I supervise people all over the world uh, in order, as I said, uh, the, there is a limit of professionals and the demand is massive. So let's say, let's go through to see what is applied behavior analysis, what is about this. So applied behavior analysis in very, very simple words is, uh, is a science. It's a scientific field. It's like chemistry, physics. It's not a procedure uh, only for individuals with autism. Uh, however, because that science has been applied a lot in um, uh, with families with autism, and um, because it is the only one which is funded by the uh, the insurances in the U.S., this is the reason that it has uh, gained a lot of popularity all over the world about ABA for individuals with autism. However, it is not only for uh, individuals with autism. It is a scientific field that, that what it tries to do is to see any, any individual, any child or person, the strengths and the limitations that they have got and in order to, uh, to improve their life. So if we see the the components the uh, sorry if we see the components of the uh, applied behavior analysis the applied means that it is something that it is hands on it is um, uh, you can see it in practice it is not a theoretical uh, in, in any uh, in any scientific field, for example, let's say medicine, it, it has to do with the application. So we are, we have made many many different tools for the assessment, for the evaluation, for the curriculum, for the structure of the program, in order to make it applicable and tailored to the needs of each person. 
So what, how it happens this? It happens by, I'm going, it happens by broken down, down all the skills into very, 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 very small units. And then try to see how these skills can be taught to any child in the environment, both at home, at school, or they are going, uh, for example, in the community with a family. And uh, based on this, there are many different ways, many different uh, approaches. It is not that one is better than the other. There are uh, different approaches. Typically, all of them are required, but in most cases, or if not in all of the cases, it has to do with what is best for the child and for the family. So, uh, and this is the reason that it acknowledges all the cultural beliefs, the cultural uh, values, and uh, without saying that, okay, this is what needs to be done in order to be carried out, is the natural way of learning, teaching, that we all as human beings have gone through. It is exactly this. It is nothing different from what we have gone through as we grew uh, older. We went to the universities, even uh, in our everyday life. But for the teaching of individuals to autism, it becomes more structured. So the behavioral component, it has to do with uh, the data. So as a scientific field, we cannot or we, we should not um, uh, implement something without having measurable data, measurable evidence, proof that something goes well. Because there are so many, uh, so many behavioral strategies and approaches and you will never know whether that will be the best one. So it doesn't work as a recipe book for example, but you implement the best approach that according to the characteristics of the child uh, you, can, you can think of, and then you always you collect data. And this data will provide you the evidence whether the uh, intervention as such doesn't need any modification, any change, or a change may be needed, or it may not be uh, efficient for that particular child, and so on. So everything has to do with the data collection. And uh, so we provide the systems, we make the systems in order to measure all of the behaviors uh, that uh, it will take place either in the natural environment or on one-to-one -one basis. Uh, and the analytic, the analytic component, it has to do with all the elements that we need to analyze the behavior. Because if uh, I will give you, uh, without going into all of these details here, but uh, giving you one example, if you focus on the development of the language, for example, uh, any efforts for the development of the language can affect the other areas of performance of the child, the social skills, the concentration, the play skills and so on. So you cannot basically take each of the performance areas uh, uh, to isolate them and then to try to work on each of those. But all of them, uh, because we are talking about the same child, the same individual, all of them are linked together. What does it mean? It means that uh, if, for example, you see in one area progress and not in another area, then we need to be able to analyze the factors why that has happened because both of the areas belong are areas part of the child's uh, performance. So we need to, an to analyze the reasons uh, that uh, in one area we see progress in not in another area, how we can contribute this, always with a focus on advancing the skills of uh, any individual. So, uh, so this, uh, this is what applied behavior analysis and why these uh, terms uh, uh, are needed. So the, the, the core, the ABCs, as we say, of behavior analysis are three. The A, which stands for antecedent. This is an event that comes before a behavior. Then we are having the behavior, so you can see here as, a, uh, as an illustration an eye, you see the slot, and then through the slot, you put the coin in, and then the consequence, it will be you are taking the, the refreshment that you wanted to, the selection. So 
this unit is the basic unit and based on all the uh, all of the skills are structured um, broken down into this unit the antecedent the behavior and the consequence the reason and this is called three term contingency for example the the vending machine that i told you this is for this reason when a child for example engages in any behavior let's say that um, an uh, inappropriate behavior the child uh, kick something kick uh, a furniture okay just this now when that happened and you just show this you cannot change it you cannot go take the time back and say okay now let's try now not to do it however what you can do is that by analyzing the antecedents what was the event just before the behavior and what the consequence when is the, the, fun, the function the reason for doing this at the, that time you are able to predict the uh, the pattern of that behavior happening again in the future and then this the intervention uh, is placed be, uh, in order to avoid the same behavior happening again in the future or at least to reduce the frequency of that behavior so this is this is how how it works usually uh, let's say that the normal the the typical uh, approach of any parent is that if they see let's say that, that inappropriate behavior and then you try to explain to the child uh, why that was not uh, appropriate uh, and it typically that explanation takes place in in words in language so we are trying to explain however as we all know this does not doesn't work for all neurotypical children but it certainly doesn't work for children with autism if it if it will work that will be extremely easy because you will set a set of rules uh, or we will say always um, uh, at times what needs to be done or not and then we wouldn't have again the same behavior in the future but this doesn't happen so in that way we need to explore uh, this core to be able to identify the antecedent all the interventions have to do with the antecedent and the consequence in an effort gradually gradually to change that behavior and from uh, inappropriate for example to make it in it uh, appropriate or if it is uh, uh, an appropriate one how we are going to improve it and to make it even uh, bigger even more substantial now the programs the aba programs there are many as i said before we try to tailor the programs according to them uh, to the children's need uh, there are a variety of different uh, programs but uh, let's say that uh, all of them uh, uh, fall within the next categories the first one is the ddt the ddt the discrete trial training uh, we will see some videos at the very end i will go take you through some videos it is basically that uh, there is the instruction or there is the yeah usually the instruction or something that you you, you say this is the antecedent here then there is either a correct response the behavior which leads to a reward would to a reward it can be don't don't think that it can be something um uh, very big it can be uh, something that we all do we say well done bravo that was amazing high five a smile a tap on the head so it is not for some behaviors, you may need to provide a little bit more artificial reward, which is called reinforcer. But in most cases, uh, we try to match the reinforcers which happen in our everyday life. And then, if an incorrect response happens, then the, uh, you are providing the correction. Most of the times is that when you place again the same pattern the same instruction and you provide a little bit more help in order most of the times to have the reinforcer to have the correct response as you do you want so the digital trial the teaching it is a very very uh, popular and it, it happens most of the times on one-to-one -one basis it, it is not necessary to uh, to be on a table it can be on the floor it can be anywhere basically uh, but it is more about one to one and it is more intensive so this is one part the other way the uh, strategies 
which are more naturalistic is the natural environment training. So here you teach through the environment. It is not very, very much the, uh, as easy as it may be seen because most of the times, as you know, children with autism, they do not have attention or concentration or follow what you want to, um, uh, to show them in, uh, in the environment. So in that way, to give you an example how the DDT can complement the natural environment uh, training is that by increasing, for example, the interest, some play skills uh, on one-to-one -one basis, and then take these uh, skills uh, in a more natural uh, environment, including a sibling, including uh, a playmate, uh, someone, a friend, uh, a cousin, and then try from there to further enhance the teaching. So natural environment uh, training is less structured. However, it is very, very, very meaningful and very important for the development of any child. Then we are having the verbal behavior. The verbal behavior, it is mainly when the language, we, we focus on the function of the language of uh, what it means. For, uh, for example, if we teach a child how to say red, he may not actually be able to say red when he wants something that it is read. So it is about the meaning of the words, the function of the words, not that much structural how the muscles in the mouth, for example. So with a verbal behavior, we are having in most comprehensive programs, we include the verbal behavior component because in all the cases, the conversation, the language, the asking, the requesting, the uh, to say things which are in the environment, everything includes language. When and if a child cannot speak, then verbal behavior can, ha can take the form of a gesture or a point or modeling or other things. Now, the other area of uh, ABA interest, it has to do with the challenging behaviors. And uh, unfortunately, most of the individuals, most of the parents with uh, children with autism, uh, most of the times have to deal with from any minor, for example, non-compliance, so the child doesn't um, follow the instructions, or even um, a more severe, for example, self-injury or aggression, or self-stimulatory, or even a small tantrums. So in that, um, in that way, all the programs have to deal with these behaviors, which are called as barriers to learning. Now, the process is not about to provide a reprimand to say, no, don't do this again. Uh, if, I, if you do this again, that will happen or anything. Because as we said before, that will never work. Is about, again, to find uh, the function of that behavior, why that behavior happens. What the child wants to communicate with us. The child having the self-stimulatory or tantrums, the child wants to tell us or to, to, uh, to give us a message about, I am bored, I don't know, uh, leave me alone, whatever it is. Now, and uh, this, is, this is stems also from, uh, from the literature which, uh, which suggests that uh, the majority of the challenging behaviors, unless there is any medical uh, reasoning, uh, has to do with, uh, uh, is associated to a lack of communication skills. So autism is not the cause of bad behavior. It is not that autism causes the, the, behavior, the behavior that a child with autism will engage in these behaviors here. In most of the times is the difficulty of a child because of the disorder, sorry, to communicate with the people. Uh, so this is where the effort uh, starts. And of course, Another area of concern is the, the generalization. So the, if the child, for example, has been taught how to discriminate between fruits or among fruits or animals or anything, then we need to make sure that how this could become an ABA program discriminable to other, uh, other situations, other uh, real life situations. 
and particularly how, for example, skills at home, they could be learned and then they could be transferred um, uh, at school or when they go out at the park and uh, in the community. So the generalization, and of course, generalization doesn't happen automatically. So there is an effort to make that generalization to happen. Remember that ABA, it has to do with strategically systematic application or learning across all of difficult or all of the areas of development of any individual. There are children who do not have particular difficulties with the generalization, although the majority of children with autism, they do have problems. They may learn, for example, something by one person and not being able to demonstrate the thing that they know with other people or in other environments and so on. So in summary, uh, we are talking about a comprehensive way. We talk, of course, this the 25 uh, hours a week or one-to-one -one or in a net or less or more. Always this uh, depends on, on the skills and on the profile of each child. And we address all skill areas of development. And uh, of course, someone in order to be able to, uh, to provide this, uh, that someone can be educated. I have included this here. However, top quality supervision is required because if something goes wrong or if you develop a, a behavior that you don't really want to happen, then it can be very, very difficult to change this. Now, let's see some, some video examples that I have um, prepared here. We may not go through all of those or um, all of them. As I said before, I will make them available to Said so that he will be able to transfer this to, um, to show this to you. Um, the definition of applied behavior analysis is the application of behavioral laws to change socially significant behavior to a meaningful degree. Socially significant behaviors can include social, language, academic, daily living, self-care, vocational, and leisure activities that improve the life experiences of the individual. Although ABA has recently received a lot of attention for being used for children with autism, it has been used for decades to solve many types of behavioral problems. When you watch a show at an animal park, you might consider what the whale and the trainers had to do to prepare for the show. The whale had been trained many hours by animal trainers who use the methods of applied behavior analysis, such as shaping, differential reinforcement, and positive reinforcement. ABA is used to teach skills to many populations. It's used in general education classrooms as well as special education classrooms. It's used by businesses to improve employee performance and customer satisfaction. It's also used to change people's behavior in regards to their health and fitness, to name a few. How do you recognize an ABA procedure or program? There are defining characteristics of ABA that make it what it is. Applied behavior analysis is the field of psychology focused on analyzing and modifying human behavior and solving socially significant problems. ABA focuses on changing behavior rather than labels, cognition, or personality. For example, ABA can be used to decrease behavioral excesses and deficits associated with autism. For some children with autism, self-stimulation is a behavior that interferes with learning and socialization. Behavior analysts can use behavior change procedures to replace these types of behaviors. Ah, ah, hippo, hippo. You're right, a hippo lives at the zoo. Find another, where's the hippo? ABA oh, relies on procedures based on principles of behavior that have been founded on more than 40 years of research across diverse populations. ABA emphasizes the modification of environmental events to change behavior. Data are taken on observable events and analyzed. Once the variables that are controlling the behavior have been identified, they are modified in such a way that the behavior increases or decreases. In the case of Grayson, his self-stimulatory behavior, 
decreased as appropriate play behaviors were taught. Once the controlling variables have been identified in the environment, a behavior plan is developed that specifies how environmental events will be manipulated each time the procedure is used. The plan is developed by professionals trained in ABA, but most often is implemented by others in the person's immediate environment. In order to ensure treatment integrity, all those that interact with the person and respond to the target behavior are trained on the behavior plan. To ensure that the plan is effective and that all parties are consistently implementing the plan, the behavior should be measured over time and analyzed so that necessary modifications can be implemented. ABA has some additional defining characteristics that were recommended by Bayer, Wolf, and Risley in 1968. They have stood the test of time and are as relevant today as ever. First, ABA is a... Let's move from this because you, you will get it. And I would like just to show to you one more video at the beginning just to see what the net, what the natural may look like because it's uh, quite important to have this in your mind when it's not. It is not only one to one. Natural environment teaching, sometimes referred to as incidental teaching, capitalizes on an individual's environment and daily routine in order to teach new skills. This method focuses heavily on a child's current interests, using a child-directed approach to facilitate the practice of new skills in different environments, with different people, and with different materials. Because of its child-directed approach, natural environment teaching creates opportunities for greater engagement and interaction, as well as built-in opportunities for generalization. Here, we will observe a brief segment of natural environment teaching, focusing on the important aspects. Nice job. Hey, you did so good today, so you get to pick a game, and we can play it together, all right? All right, did you find something you want? What's What's, what is this? Letter game. It's a game? What kind of game? Letter game? The so here, we will go through this just a, a, a minute or so, not much, but uh, there are specific targets. There is a specific program. So here, it is not just a natural play uh, event. There are specific uh, um, uh, program uh, targets, objectives, that the therapist here has included within these which, which to everyone may look as a normal play uh, uh, activity. Alphabet bean bag. Okay, let's play on the floor. Here, notice the instructor waits to see what the child finds interesting within the environment. Once an item is selected by the child, the instructor will use this item to incorporate educational targets. What are these called? Uh. Do you remember what they're called? They're bean bags. Bean bags with what on them? Letters. Letters, all right. Hey, what color do you want to be? What do we do? We throw them? Okay. Do you, how about you pick three colors to be? You have green. You have, what, what color is that one? Green, green, red. Red, okay. Orange. And orange, okay, those are your three. Do you see anything else that you need? No, not, not that one. That's mine, silly. You need more? More what? Green. Yeah. You need more green ones. And what else do you need? Red ones. And what else do you need? Orange. Orange ones. Okay. So now I have black. And what other color should I be? What color is this? Yellow. Yellow. Very cool. How many yellows are there? One, two, three, four. Four and... Okay. Wait, look at... One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I'm going to be purple. Notice that the instructor is using the letter beanbag activity to work on several targets. Color and letter identification, conversational exchanges, and problem solving to find missing items are all incorporated within the same activity. We're going to aim for this box and we're going to throw them in, okay? Who's going to go first? Okay. And then you are. It continues. So in that way, this is a, a way of natural teaching. Now, 
as I said, I will, I will give you the, the videos and then at our next opportunity, we will be able to explore some questions. These videos, I selected them just to give you a taste of what it is, what uh, ABA is. Uh, now, how this, the ensuring of quality of ABA programs is, um, happens, take place, because uh, uh, it doesn't come as a surprise that uh, there are people now on the internet, they just watch, let's say, the videos that uh, I, will, I will send to you, and they say, yes, I, we are doing a behavioral analysis, apply a behavioral analysis. And of course, this, is, this cannot be the case. Uh, it, is, it is quite... Um, um, uh, important and in-depth uh, teaching and learning at the university level in order someone to become a, a behavioral analyst. So here, uh, there is the board, and this is what um, you heard before. Uh, I told you that uh, I used to be uh, one of the directors of the board, the, the only non-American director until my circle um, ended. Uh, which is the Behavioral Analyst Certification Board. So this is uh, the board, this is uh, in the States, um, in, uh, in Denver, and then they regulate the, the guidelines and the structure and the qualities for all the behavioral analysts uh, in the world. Uh, now, this BSEB was funded in 1998. There are some changes about how, the, how that will uh, be implemented in other countries in the world, but um, uh, this is not, let's say, the discussion that we will do. But uh, they provide uh, uh, all the teaching. For example, the teaching that I am doing at very, very various courses, MSc courses in, the, in Europe, or other courses that I do for, uh, as you will uh, hear, the RBTs and everything, uh, all these have been um, uh, confirmed and can be evaluated by the BSEB. No, no, so not everyone will get. So the ex final exams for everyone will be, uh, will be provided by the BSEB. Uh, of course, uh, virtually now, uh, even before, not a, you didn't have to travel to Denver, but they provide by, uh, by them. And they have got uh, measures in order to, to be able uh, to maintain your credentials. So the credentials that the BSEB provide are these, is the RBT, which is the, uh, someone who has completed high school, bachelor's, if someone, which is the BCABA, which is a board certified assistant behavior analyst, someone who has completed a master's, which is the board certified, and someone who has completed a PhD, uh, uh, who, who is a BCBAD. So this is where I am. Uh, now, uh, at the moment, the, the RBT, uh, Think about the RPT or the person who is the RPT is the person who provides the training, who provides the hands-on training under the close supervision of a, a master's of a BCBA or BCBAD. So here, because I have provided many RBT courses, uh, and this is, a, uh, this is something that we will go through in a minute, uh, many times there are parents when they would like to know more about um, how the uh, how the behaviors develop and what they can do about the behaviors. So it's not um, let's say yes. Of course, it is uh, nice to uh, to be able uh, to have the uh, accreditation. However, for the accreditation to be maintained, you need to have a supervision for some time of five percent of your services which means that someone who is an RPT has got the BCBA or the BCB, BCBAD as a supervisor. Now, in countries when uh, this uh, is not, uh, I know that in, uh, I just checked in Bangladesh, there was only one RBT and not anymore. Uh, uh, and there are not any BCBAs or, or anyone accredited by the, uh, by the board. However, that people, this does not mean that they, they are not able to implement the knowledge that they have received. Uh, of course, they are, they are able uh, to, uh, to demonstrate. However, in the absence of any supervision, then they, they are not able to, for example, to sign as an RPT. However, as I said, it's a very, very uh, important and informative uh, courses 
uh, for for parents. These courses uh, are 40 hours. There is a specific task list, and uh, this is um, uh, the, it covers 40 hours of training. Now. What is exactly the behavioral te uh, technician is the paraprofessional certification in behavioral analysis and these people assist in delivering the behavioral analysis services and practice under the direct and close supervision of an RBT supervisor or RBT requirements coordinator. Uh, you will find a lot of information. There is a, also a handbook uh, that uh, you can download from, uh, from the website here. So the BHCB, this up to here is the website of the board and then the RBT, it will take you there. There is a, a lot of information. There is a, an extensive handbook. So you will be able to see everything from there. Uh, now, as a visual illustration, how it can work, and this is from the BSEB as well, is that uh, there are a number of RPTs, one, two, three, four, depending on the needs of the, the program that you're having, and all of these people are supervised by a BCBA or a BCBAD. So that person provides a clinical direction supervision and case management, and uh, the RPTs execute these instructions. Or it can be like this. For example, you show that uh, someone who is a bachelor, a bachelor level, they are called the BC assistant behavior analyst who can assist in, in, um, in, in the event that there are more RBTs. So for example, here there are six RBTs. It might be difficult to be uh, supervised only by one person. So there is an assistant. So this is normally the structure uh, that uh, it can happen. Now, uh, because um, uh, I, I also prepared, because I thought that and through my discussion with uh, Said, uh, how would it can be done for the families in Bangladesh or how help it can be. So Said told me that uh, something that's a, a, a certification. So the, the main certi certification that it can happen and also in uh, uh, using, for example, Zoom virtually without people having to go there is the RBT. The other two courses, the BCBA and the BCBA, uh, BCABA, this needs to be through a university. Uh, and uh, at the moment, there is not time in, Bang in Bangladesh uh, to develop uh, something like this in the, at the universities because things will change from the 2023. Uh, so this is, this is one uh, official formal, let's say, training for parents or people, the 40-hour uh, course. And uh, in, because I have been delivering these courses now nearly five years, uh, typically the courses, and in order to make them um, economically more cost-effective for the participants and also... Uh, uh, effective in terms of the transferring of uh, the uh, all the knowledge and the information, uh, groups of m no more than 30 people may be required. Now, I am giving you today, I didn't want to give you any, any costings or anything like this, but of course, I will at some point, um, based on the interest, I will try, um, uh, give this information to Said. Um, but uh, this is what I have found. This does not mean, for example, that, okay, if there are 10 people, uh, it cannot run. Of course, it can run. It can run even with five people. But as you can Im imagine, that the cost of the overall co course it will be uh, spread uh, uh, across five people uh, as opposed to 30 people. The cost remains the same. It is uh, how, uh, uh, how to how many people it's going to be divided. And then, that, so that's, that was the one area that I can help or I can contribute to your uh, teaching. And then the other one, is that um, whether specialized workshops can um, can run. Uh, and I have included here areas of my expertise and uh, that uh, we can we can provide, I can make and provide workshops. Uh, 
so that's uh, what is that means. These workshops will be more hands-on workshop, but again, in order to make them more cost-effective, uh, typically I run them up to a maximum of ten people. There are, again, as I said, there will be five people. Uh, three people, it doesn't really matter. The cost for each of the of the person increases when there are not many. Uh, but in order to have it efficient, something like uh, seven, eight, nine people is, is a good number. And then they share, these people within that group, they share the, the same uh, interests uh, or the same problems. For example, let's say toilet training within the self-care or dressing, or undressing, or um, uh, some skills, academic, cognitive, or uh, how to get out community participation, how to go to a mall or to for shopping. I know now uh, it's a little bit, we, we are having too many restrictions with the COVID-19, but um, uh, you understand what I'm trying to say, yeah. or how to cope and to accept, for example, a no as an answer here, or how to develop uh, emotions and to, uh, to recognize emotions in other people and to demonstrate his or her emotions. Uh, issues within the family structure, within the siblings, uh, within the parents, mother and father, and, them, and the child, uh, him or herself. Of course, language or communications, play and leisure skills, academic and of course, pre-academic skills challenging, safety, self-management, social relationships, and of course, for uh, older children, uh, vocational skills. So the way that I, I structure these workshops is that uh, um, they don't stay only on, on theoretical aspects, but uh, exploring the main components of, uh, of behavior analysis, it is a structure on a more hands-on uh, information uh, and guidance. And then there are parents at the times that they, they try, they implement, they make some videos at the following time of uh, our meeting, they demonstrate the videos. Uh, to me, I, I am able to coach, to correct, to make recommendations and so on. So in that, uh, in that way, it is more about, uh, let's say, the, the applicability uh, uh, from uh, considering all the practical constraints that someone can have, particularly in countries where um, professionals implementing uh, uh, behavioral analysis are not many. In the, in the case of Bangladesh, there is none. Uh, so this is what uh, I prepared uh, for you. This is where my email address uh, is, but of course, any questions, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's put it that way, that um, it can be much, much better if you as a group, uh, uh, you discuss, you make questions, and then these questions uh, are organized uh, from Said, and then Said uh, gives this to me, and in that kind of communication. But this does not mean that, okay, I am not uh, visible. If you want to email me personally, I will be more than happy. But I believe that uh, all this coordination by Said will facilitate more families because there will not be a repetition of the same or the same questions. And then uh, uh, decisions or organization matters can happen in that way more efficiently. So that was, that was it. Um, Thank you so much, Christus. I mean, that was an I mean impressive presentation because we got a, a fundamental ideas about ABA and also the courses you offer, right? So as you you told me, you have another uh, event today after I guess uh, uh, roughly like forty minutes. Okay, so we can go for questions like for twenty twenty five minutes. I guess. Yes. Uh, do we have? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we okay. have twenty minutes or twenty five minutes, right? And uh, before I uh, make this so open to everybody, I have one question uh, about uh, you know the certification courses you were talking about. Um, is any you know degree in psychology, kind of like bachelor in psychology, kind of degree is a prerequisite to these courses? For the for the RBT courses, no. For the other courses, there is there is. Uh... 
um, yes, a restriction for the BCBA and the BCABA. But at the moment, there is not um, there is not any case that will happen in Bangladesh because the, from the 2023, these courses will not be provided by the BSCB. They need to be accredited nationally by each country. So it is a long, long process for that to happen. And at the moment, um, uh, it cannot happen in, um, in Bangladesh. However, for the RBT, no, there is not any requirement just for someone to have uh, completed uh, the school. As, as I said, the majority uh, are parents or people or young students that they want to learn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think, I mean, uh, apart from this like bachelor degree or master degree, we can go for RBT, this is one thing. And another thing for the parents, I'm sure, I mean, parents are not looking for certification, as I, un as I understand. Right? So we'll have a discussion. And as you said, after this event, when I put up this uh, video in our group, I will, uh, you know, invite like, you know, a discussion from our parents and other people, as you, uh, the way you said, and I will summarize that, and then I will contact you. And now I'll open the floor to, for questions. Uh, to our honorable, like, you know, uh, guests, like parents and other professionals. Do you have any question, please? Because uh, we are kind of running short of time. We have 20 minutes uh, for question because a uh, little bit um, we need to save for our conclusion. So if you have any question, please ask Dr. Christus Nikopoulos. Uh, I do have some questions. Should I just ask or I just... No, 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 sure, please. Okay, I, I just begin. Um, thank you, Mr. Saibai, because this is a great initiative. Uh, it's a great opportunity to meet such a professional like Christos. And uh, thank you. And I just want to share one thing with you is that the first thing you said that it's the profession that chooses you. You, it's not like you choose to be like uh, become a professional. So I could feel the connection that. It's the profession that chooses us, and then you really become somebody that you, you you can you don't feel like that you are doing something for some people. You just do the right thing when it is uh, in the right place and right time. So thank you for <laughs> giving me that imp impression, and I I can feel it and I can connect with you. So uh, you. I'm an occupational therapist, and um, it's a, and certified from the Board of Occupational Therapy. And I finished Masters of Special Education from uh, Australia last year. This year, I just came back to Bangladesh to work with my clients. So the thing is, now, um, from my previous uh, professional experience and practice, we've been always having fight with sensory integration and behavior modification, or the ABA. Because some of the issues are coming from uh, sensory, like the hand flapping, or um, some sensory behavior? Because this is a question that we always face and we are, I, I really don't have a good answer. So how can uh, this can be solved with a behavioral approach? I think you are the right person to answer this thing. And I also have two more questions. So this is the first thing I, I want to know from you. <laughs> right, yes. I mean, I will try to be very uh, brief to, the, to your question. Is this that uh, in behavior analysis, of course, we do not uh, disregard any, any sensory related behaviors. Uh, what we disregard is this, that any change in the behavior um, uh, level which cannot be observable. For example, uh, in most cases when they provide the sensory integration, the SI as they say, uh, with the hope that there will be a lot of changes within the brain, within uh, the way that um, inside the person may function, and this, of course, you will not have an evidence to demonstrate that indeed this is what it happened. And this is as a scientific field, we couldn't say that this is what it happened. However, we can introduce and we can say that the um, experience or engagement with sensory motor activities, when we structure a, a, a way of measuring objectively the effects, the impact that these activities can have on the child's performance. Of course, in that way, uh, it can happen. So it is not about the existence or not existence of uh, sensory problems, it's about how you demonstrate the effectiveness of the intervention that you provide or not. 
Uh, uh, should I go for my next question? Yeah, yeah, please. Just uh, okay, thank you. And the thing is, um, because you, you know, the uh, I just want to give you a little bit background of uh, our country is that uh, we don't the family don't have insurance for uh, therapy or anything, so it is difficult for the par parents to go beyond like um, for a long time for some children might respond very well after two years or three years they might come into a stage so this is what i find is very very stressful for all families so that's why sometimes it is important that um, we don't only focus on one area like that's why i took several <laughs> degrees that i'm still looking for more mm -hmm. because only one area of intervention cannot solve the issues that is related with children with autism and other behavior or developmental disabilities because they have problem with so many different um, areas. So in that regard, I think it is very important that if we can combine with, because I love AVA and combine everything with this thing and then vice versa. So sometimes yeah. parents, parents in our country get very confused. They think, okay, if I use ABA method, my child will be cured. If I think sensory instigation, you will learn motor function and you will learn to read and write. If I go to a speech therapist, then they will be talking from uh, next uh, two weeks. So this, this is really difficult for us uh, to explain parents that not an approach that needs to be combined and com and uh, interrelated and intershared. So the, yeah, the, I like this, is the best to explain all these things. Yeah, the, th the thing is this, that I just make a comment on this because, um, uh, believe me, mo the same um, difficulties many parents here in the UK still have got. So uh, I wouldn't take it as uh, something that it happens only in Bangladesh, but uh, it can happen everywhere. What is, uh, and I will repeat what I said before, it is not about whether it is called ABA or occupational therapy, speech and language therapy. Uh, I collaborate with all the different professionals. What distinct is that uh, in in the way that all these professionals work, they work under a behavioral platform. And what is the behavioral pl platform is that whatever we do, we need to have evidence and uh, concrete evidence proof that that works. So in that case, and I believe that uh, in any profession, they're exactly the same, they, they, they will try to, to pursue. So from that direction, there, there should not be conflicts and there are not any conflicts. ABA is just the natural way of learning for any individual. We, all of us here, we have been through ABA without having someone to say that this is ABA. Uh, however, when, uh, for example, when we went to the university, we didn't want uh, uh, our work uh, to be um, marked as, yeah, we, you, you were a good student or anything. We want the A, B, C, the, the grade, whatever the number in order to use it to go to enter the university and so on. So this is exactly where the ABA stands. We don't start and it's most significant. It's not about giving this very, very subjective impression of, yes, the child is going well, but you need to have a proof. You need to have the grade. You need to have as closely as possible. Of course, you may not be able to measure all of the behaviors, but at least the more that you can, then you are having evidence and saying that, okay, in this area, we are doing well here. We need this approach, this help, this, 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 and then to make any informed database decisions. So this is, this is all about, there is nothing about conflicts among professionals or anything else. Thank you so much. I mean, can I have any other question? Anybody, Dr. Mathu, you are like raising your hand. Yes. Um, please, uh, hello? please just give the question. Hello? Only 10 yes. minutes, I guess. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kistos. Uh, it's a nice presentation. And my apologies that I did not uh, join uh, in, in time, a little bit late. This might, might miss some of your points. Uh, keep, uh, I live in the UK. I live in Southampton. And I have an autistic uh, son, which is around 18 years old. Now, uh, the, the, the presentations you have done is very fantastic. And what I'm understood, uh, I don't have any enough idea and knowledge about ABA, but I'm just getting learning it now because I need it to apply to my son. Mm -hmm. 
my question is uh, is there any specific age of the autistic child or uh, children whoever it is to start ABA or it can be started at any point of time this is the first question and the second question is as you said it is a very much systematic approach so it is very much coordinated and articulated way need to be applied and it should be involved but not only one person like ABA therapist it should be involved all the people who nurse the children or child Yep. Uh, maybe parents or maybe the school or college as well and other people which in, in the family members uh, so it should be articulated approach uh, now uh, in uh, it looks like good uh, in theory it's fine but in practically uh, it is very hard because every people has a different um, uh, attitude uh, to the children. Me, doctor, yes. doctor, doctor i mean uh, could you please just hit the question because actually yes. he has another program today. okay sorry uh, so the first question is is there any specific age to start and second question is uh, how you we can um, articulate this all combined uh, uh, integration of all the people together in one environment to apply aba thank you yes uh, regarding the age, no, the, there is not any age. The, the only, the main difference that uh, you can see if you are having a child, let's say at the age of three or four, or a child of 12, 14, is that because of their behavioral history, because of the experiences that they had, uh, it might be uh, slower or more difficult to change some certain behaviors, and particularly some uh, problematic behaviors. Because if a child of the age of 14, for example, has got self-stimulatory behaviors or any other stereotypic behaviors for all these years, in order to break that pattern, it will take more time and more persistence. So this is the difference. And we can see that, think about a any person who goes for the first time at school at the age of 14, it can be of course, more difficult from a child who goes to school at the age of five or even younger to a nursery. So it more or less is exactly the same, but it has to do with the behavioral history and the problematic behaviors, if they stay for long, long period of time, it is, it is more difficult. And the reason is that it is more difficult because it can be con controlled by many, many different variables in the environment, by many different people in a many different settings. And then you are having difficulties in order to find the appropriate function. The function may change across different environments, across different people. So this is what it makes it more difficult to see changes. However, there is not any restriction uh, about the age. About your second question, yes, this is a... I am afraid that this is a, uh, this is a, a question that I wish I had a very, very good answer to give. Um, it is about education, it's about the people uh, coming together, uh, learning as much as possible. If a coordinator uh, facilitates this and provides training, for example, to, to the parents or to other uh, significant people, carers who, who live within uh, the house, um, depending very, very much, uh, you have to go through a number of difficulties. For example, here in the UK, you have got the difficulties how to approach schools. The schools may accept you, may not. Most of the times they don't accept it. They say that we are having our own strategies and this is it. Yes, but you, when you are trying to say that, okay, I'm not, uh, I haven't come here to say, to comment or to criticize your strategies. It's about to find the best strategies for that child, not only at school, but also at home. So we want this sort of collaboration. Uh, usually it doesn't happen. So it is... Um, you have to overcome this kind of obstacles, but in most cases is the, the training, the education, some coordinator, someone who can, who might be able to organize this, uh, this network of people. It's not easy. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this is not, uh, it's not easy, but um, this is the only way. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mahbubul Kader okay. Babu, I mean, you have a question, I guess. Yeah, just, just unmute, un please. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Christos, for accepting my invitation and uh, shared your uh, knowledge with us. And I think a lot of people in Bangladesh uh, don't know about ABA much. And also, 
Uh, my question would be, uh, as uh, I think Dr. Nurnahar Rapa was, uh, as she mentioned about the insurance policy, I think that's only in America, Canada and Australia may have, have that facilities. Uh, around the world, no uh, insurance covers. It is the same in here in the UK. It, uh, I mean, parents don't get, you know, I mean, insurance doesn't cover ABA. And also mm -hmm. we struggle um, uh, to get uh, tutors. We get uh, a lot of consultants, but tutor is a very, very crucial issue here. If like the Christus, they can uh, do something to, uh, to create more ABA tutors who would be actually uh, applying the ABA to the to the to the uh, children for the I mean that would be great help for the parents and uh, as for Bangladeshi parents uh, like if they can also learn a lot about <coughs> ABA they can do because it it is not a uh, it is not a cheap uh, provision it is quite expensive and for parents it's very difficult to continue it for the long term with, um, I mean, the amount of number of hours needed. So, yeah. I mean, from uh, the Christus point of view, needs to uh, implement something for families, uh, for the parents, at least um, if they want, they can do some sort of, uh, I mean, uh, things so without time. the help of the tutors. Mm -hmm. And thanks again, Dr. Christus, for coming here. Yes, thank yes. So thank you so much, uh, Babu Bhai, because I mean, without you, it's not been, not been even possible. Shazmoon yeah. Nahar, uh, I mean, she joined from London. Uh, she has a question, I guess. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah. We, we, yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, hello, doctor. Uh, my name hello. is Shazmoon. I'm from London. My daughter is nine years old, and she's going John F. Kennedy. She used to go at Provision School. But from the beginning in England, I know you know uh, this issue that school always uh, uh, approach uh, core board and uh, PEX methods. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering why ABA has not been introduced like national curriculum wise, because uh, uh, it is scientifically proven now that ABA is more um, um, useful than other method. So yeah. if I want to, my question is, if I want to introduce my daughter to ABA therapy now, I have to go privately or I can approach the school? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, again, it's, it's, a long it's a long discussion about this, but um, uh, which is uh, in one way is that how uh, science is uh, interpreted and used uh, in the UK, for example. Uh, and uh, we have seen a lot, many, many, many examples, very, uh, uh, recent examples, uh, how they treat uh, the COVID-19 and um, why all this mess has happened. So um, I am afraid this is what it, it is happening. There are five, six ABA schools. I used to be a governor of one of them. So I know in advance that in order to, to have an ABA school, you need to have, let's say, 60% ABA, 40% of what they provide. Um, uh, again, it is it is a treatment of choice. For example, in countries like the States, like uh, Canada, uh, in Norway, uh, here in in um, in in Europe, uh, in Denmark, in uh, Netherlands, but then not in the UK. So the, most of the times, uh, parents battle. Uh, and they have to take the cases themselves. Uh, the, many parents, and they have helped many parents to go to tribunals. It is not a it is not a pleasant situation because you no. waste uh, two three years of uh, uh, your child's uh, time. So they parents they try to, uh, let's say, to have a little bit of ABA, a little bit of the uh, the provision that they provide at schools. Uh, and this is how how things can happen. And of course, as Babu said, they, uh, everything depends on the finances, the financial situation of its uh, uh, family. Um, the the only uh, going back to what also Babu uh, Babu said um, is about that. I am trying to provide mm -hmm. training uh, even here in the UK to have more tutors. There is a shortage of tutors. There is not a uh, it is something that which has been recognized that there are not so many available and the reason is that uh, the it is not governmentally funded they work 
So you don't really know whether you are going to have a work uh, uh, tomorrow. And it's not only this, in, in the towns like um, uh, cities like uh, London, you may have got a client, let's say east, and then the next client would be uh, west of London. So you would need two hours travel to go and two hours to come back. So financially, it is a difficult situation for everyone. Uh, we, we we try our, our best in order to um, to convey this message, but um, it is more or less the how science is translated in a different way. Okay, thank you, thank you, doctor. Yeah, I, I wish I was giving you a more positive answer, but I I don't have. This is why I struggle here, and to be honest, uh, yes. my majority of work it has nothing, not has nothing. Let's say 40% I work in the UK and the next, uh, the rest 60% in all over the other countries uh, around the world. In order, uh, I spent too many years here to battle with the system, to battle with the courts, where they're helping. And then uh, you see that uh, there are times when it is like you bang your head against the wall. Uh, yeah. So, um, at least uh, as much energy as I have got now to use it for, for parents to, to help their children. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we, we, can, we can take one more question. Um, yes. Anybody has a question? Yes, yes of course. Yes, ma'am, please. Um, thank you, organizer, and thanks to Mr. Speaker for a brilliant presentation. Uh, uh, actually, as a parent from Bangladesh and not from the capital city, it is I am from Chitong, Chottogram. Uh, till date, near about 60,000 families enlisted with having childhood autism. 60,000? 60, 60,000. We have a national survey ongoing. Uh, it is 57,000 something, so near about 60,000 on our watch. Having childhood autism, and most of them have been diagnosed after six years, seven years. So, as a, uh, a specialist, as a uh, to Babu Bhai and to Sayed Ahmed Bhai. Can you provide some training for the families or parents in group of 30 like RVG? Yes, 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 yes. 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 I, can, I can do this, this uh, for, that's for the workshop. Yes. That's already and mentioned through the idea. Through the, through the organizer. Mm -hmm. Because we have no behavioral therapist. Mm -hmm. All of us know that the ABA is the evidence-based practice. Even the OTs are very rare outside capital city. Yeah. So you can really imagine what is the family is going on with their children. And my yeah. child is 31 years old. I really know what is our problem. So again, my heartiest thanks to organizer. After 30 years, I am getting this. So uh, I think that uh, the organizer and uh, Mr. Christopher would organize training ongoing for the families of Bangladesh so far you can. And my heartiest thank to you for this presentation thank and thanks to organizers. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, Dr. Vashwana Mohri is a medical, I mean, I mean, he was the professor of Shadokan. I'm a pediatrician. Yeah, I'm a pediatrician and she is also, I mean, the vice president of a very huge, I mean, a big, uh, uh, autism organization in Bangladesh. Right. Any other may, may, the main editor, I am a parent. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Lupa, Lupa, yes. do you have any questions, please? Hi, I know that um, you don't have much time. Um, sorry to just um, make no, no, that no, quite no, late. Um, uh, before, so before, yes, before you continue about the time, just because I don't want to, we started this initiation, don't want to rush it. However, I have got another appointment in 10 minutes about. Uh, when when I will say I will do it today. But, um, uh, so what is it, how you I pronounce correctly your name, Said? Said Said. Said Ahmed. Yeah. Said Ahmed. Okay. So when, <laughs> so when I, when when I give all the all the uh, the material and the presentation, and of course you may need to to um, uh, to translate for some parents or anything, and then as a group, let's say you sit down, you gather questions, and then we can have another session like this, just questions, Actually, and and questions and answers. 
Yeah, it's not possible yeah. to finish everything in one session. Yes. Today yeah. is not actually yeah. introductory session. Yes, Rupa, uh, Rupa, if you have any questions. Uh, please, please tell me, yes. Um, it's so lovely to meet you and, and thank you so much to Syed Ahmed and Babu for organizing such a wonderful um, event. Uh, I think it would help a lot of people in Bangladesh, not just a Bangladesh, a little bit disappointed, I have to say that. I live in the UK and my son is uh, nearly 23 years old, never been introduced ABA. So um, I would say, and I work for NHS, um, as a, um, so I've just uh, come out, uh, you know, for like just to uh, participate here and just want to see how it works. Um, and my son, um, 23, and I've just a little bit, like I said, that, you know, it should have been introduced quite a long time ago to us, um, if it has, um, but, um, you know, now he's 23 and how am I going to approach this to him? And is, is it going to help? Uh, that would be my question. Um, I think um, the uh, parents who have got um, um, like an older um, autistic children, my son has got severe learning disabilities and also he has got no speech at all. He doesn't talk and his communication is through the text and also sometimes he does use the um, communication aid and that he's not interested at all um, but we are trying our best to uh, make it work for him but how am I going to really do this ABA now um, the person who don't speak at all and, it is, um, uh, yes it, it, it is not only the language but uh, you will see minor um, changes because of the age because of 23 years and because of the behavioral history that I said before most of the times, uh, uh, not most of the times, but this is how it works. You see and you analyze the, uh, the excesses and the limitations of the child, of your son. What are the, his strong areas? And also, what is the environment, his environment? What you would like to see happening? For example, to be able, uh, I don't know, to get dressed himself or to do things at home or vocational training. And based on this, you try to isolate at least some skills that you can teach in order to make some progress towards the quality of the life of the person. Uh, it can be, yes, you, you were right, it can be completely different if the child, if your son was five years old and then you will be able to work on all areas of development. Now you need to give some sort of a prior, priority uh, to the area that uh, you would like to see a few steps, forward steps to happen and then based on this to see what are the prerequisite skills and how this can be taught. Thank you so but, much. Uh, this also... is this is very very general. I mean, of course, if I if I knew and um, I was able to uh, to know more about your son, then I will be able to give you more suggestions. But this is how it happens. The environment is not something which is neglected. Uh, it's not about a child with autism age eight and that's enough. It's about a child who is eight who lives. <laughs> has got autism which may present some sort of difficulties this is how it should be uh, presented and seen thank you so much and i'm going to ask you one more silly questions um if you <laughs> give me permit me um as you're saying that our tv is going to be like the training is a 40 hours and is, um, you are kind of like can provide that in bangladesh and my concern is that because I work uh, for the specialist children parents, um, I, I'm trying to uh, support them um, emotionally. Um, mm -hmm. Even though I got experience, but I don't have the certification, so I really don't want to kind of like give them any advice. I just only share my experience with them and how I helped my child. That's what I only do this. And um, but I think it's the language would be a very difficult. Even the parents wants to contribute, you know, if they want to participate. Uh, do you have anything that a translator that you can provide uh, while you are um, doing this course in Bangali? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I want to just I want you to inter intervene uh, in this question. I mean, Rupa Kabir and uh, to help Christus. This is what uh, special child care will do. I mean, we'll be I mean, uh, you know, with uh, Christus because if we do anything, we'll be I mean, offering combined, of course, and uh, then th that will not be a problem, I guess. I mean, the language will not be a problem. Right, that will try to manage, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, of course. Translation. I will. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I will also check whether there are there is anything in English in uh, in Bengali, but um, 
I'm not, I, I don't think so. I mean, most of the uh, literature and everything is in English, but uh, however, yes, uh, we will do whatever possible to be translated uh, or to, or to be... As uh, much as possible, uh, special childcare would do uh, yeah. with translation. And otherwise, yeah. I mean, I think not be a problem. So uh, we're going to finish it uh, just running. Around. Thank you so much again. Yes. Thank you very much. And Thank you very much. To, sorry, I just wanted to add, like, like uh, if you start with the language because i i do uh, know a little bit not i, I have participated courses on uh, short courses on ABA. so i'll be volunteering to Fantastic. translate I, I have no problem explaining with the Fantastic. local language and connecting with the a practical example of BBS because some of the things are culturally different yeah, yeah. Yes, so yes, yes, you're I right. Can do the volunteering. That's not a problem. Okay. Fantastic. Yes. Hoping to get another session with Dr. Christos. Yes. Uh, yes. It's so lovely to meet you again. And uh, I'm sure that it's really nice um, to know more um, about all this. Mm. And please do bring more ABA for us. Yes, I will try. That's my intention. <laughs> yeah, just the last the few words. I mean, from special child care, I would like to welcome, I mean, I thank you so much. I mean, Dr. Christos uh, Nicopoulos. I mean, we have started only uh, not even three months. We started uh, 4th of July this year, and this is still an you know, online platform. I mean, we, I mean, you have got some ideas about us through our videos, through our meetings. So we are talking to parents and professionals from uh, different countries. And we have also started an intensive parents training program that's going on. We have finished like 17, 18 days. Right. That's mm -hmm. and the parents are and the and the profit. I mean, the participants are really happy because they said it's the first time they're going to have all these things like you know explain to them assessments mm -hmm. and evaluation and working with their children. You know, um, I mean that is uh, completely uh, themselves. I mean, which you, they're not really used to in our country and also a part of India. So um, uh, thank you so much. I mean, we will be talking more, and as you yeah. said, I will try to, I mean, uh, reach all the people uh, who are interested in APA and translation if you required, right? So we will meet again that we are planning yes. to, I mean, yeah. if you have time. You are a very busy person as you work in different roles, as I said in the beginning of the session, and it was very difficult to find time for us. Thank you very much, Christos. And I would like to thank all others joined today, uh, you mm -hmm. know, our advisor, Dr. Madhwacharya and other professionals, Dr. Bashana Mori, Nona Nukorupa, Apan, Shazmun Nahar, and all others joined. Especially special thanks to Babu Bhai, of course, because he was the liazo person between us. I mean, for, and he's an executive committee member, actually, of special child care. Thank you very much, Christos. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, very much thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Okay. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Of course. Bye-bye, yeah, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.